students were recently warned not to take pictures or videos of Lemieux. And if they did so, they would face suspension. Yeah. Thankfully, this threat hasn't stopped some brave students from recording Busty Lemieux and his shenanigans. And one video that was recently shot is most interesting indeed. It appears to show a student vaping in class. That's a no-no, right? But look at this video. The kid is vaping away right next to Busty Lemieux, and Lemieux is doing nothing to lay down the law. Then again, we've heard his classes are disasters these days. None of the students respect this wannabe drag queen. The kids aren't learning anything, and they're all doing their own thing, as that vaping video clearly demonstrates. And really, <laughs> can you blame them? By the way, when it comes to the rules, forget about the Ministry of Education. Where in blue hell is the Ministry of Labor? Busty Lemieux continues to violate every workshop etiquette rule in the book. Long sleeve shirts, jewelry, no hairnet, and so on and so forth. But apparently it's no harm, no foul. Why? Oh yeah, I almost forgot. Lemieux is allegedly a trans individual, and we should all know by now, trans people don't have equal rights. They have extra special rights. Excuse me, ma'am. No porn at the bar. Oh, it's okay. I'm transgender. Oh, I, I had no idea. Do whatever you want all the time. As well, it should be noted that the HDSB is now reassigning Busty Lemieux to other schools in the district. While he started the school year at Oakville Trafalgar High School back in September, he was recently dispatched to Dr. Frank J. Hayden Secondary School in Burlington. Now check out this little video that shows Busty Lemieux hobbling along a school hallway with the help of crutches while wearing a boot cast on his right foot. Now, why is the HDSB playing whack-a-mole with the Busty one? Is it to take the heat off Oakville Trafalgar High School? You see, folks, in the last several weeks, this school has been the frequent target of numerous bomb threats all of which were proven to be thankfully bogus. Alas, I suspect it is only a matter of time before Dr. Frank J. Hayden Secondary School receives phoned-in bomb threats, too. As well, one wonders how Lemieux presumably hurt his foot. Could it have been from a skydiving mishap? After all, in late October, Lemieux went parachuting with an individual named Voodoo, now, Voodoo is self-described as, quote, the conservative porn star skydiver, end quote. <laughs> no, we're not making this up, folks. Trust us. And check out these ludicrous pics. But wait a minute. I thought there was a photo ban regarding this publicity prostitute. So do you get the feeling, folks, that Busty Lemieux never even asked for such a photo ban but this was self-generated by the HDSB, you know, to make this story go away. <laughs> Another development in recent weeks was that the HDSB took delivery of a staff report which looked at the possibility of implementing a dress code for its teachers. The answer, well, staff said it's impossible to do so due to potential liability. But does that make any sense, folks? There is a dress code for students. There's even, if you can believe it, a Halloween costume dress code. In fact, this recommendation against a dress code for staffers is absolute rubbish, according to respected labor lawyers Howard Levitt and Peter Carey. Writing in the Financial Post recently, Levitt and Carey stated the following, quote, even in a unionized environment, an employer always has the right to ensure that employees are appropriately attired. By appropriately, we mean in a fashion appropriate to the position and which does not alienate customers, other employees, and others with whom they deal. Why then is the Halton District School Board allowing this garish, sexualized, hyperbolic, provocative, in short, completely inappropriate attire. 
One has to conjure that they are a victim of wokeness because the teacher in question has self-identified as transgendered. They are terrified to take appropriate action. If any of us went to work in costume or barefoot, and generally unkempt, we would reasonably expect to be sent home, if not fired. If we argued that we did so as a presentation of a particular identity or even gender identity, it would be no different as that is not a defense, contrary to what Halton would have you believe. Let's be clear. The Halton District School Board has the legal ability to insist that their teachers wear appropriate attire to school. They should do that in the present case. Not to do so actually creates a precedent and legally opens the door for further abuses. The Halton District School Board is failing its students and its teachers in not dealing with such outrageous conduct, end quote. But apparently the HDSB educrats know better than Canada's top labor lawyers. Oh, they're so smart, those Halton educrats. And while wokeness is driving the agenda, it is only up until a certain point. Oh, sure, the HDSB educrats, they're all down with that radical transgender revolution. But only when students have to put up with such a freak show. Because when it comes to the HDSB educrats, when someone comes to their doorstep dressed in an identical fashion to Bussy Lemieux, well, that's a little too, you know, vulgar for them. That's an excerpt from my show every night. It's called The Ezra Levant Show. That's me, Ezra Levant. Uh, you can see the whole thing behind our paywall. Well, oh, there's a lot of goodies behind there. I do a show every weeknight. My friends Sheila gunn Reed and David Menzies and Nat and Kat have their shows too. You get a ton of content for just eight bucks a month. There's so much in there you won't find anywhere else. Go to rebelnewsplus.com.